Part of the solar thermal installation course has us developing online solar delivery content and the other part is going to be actually in the lab. And those of you that have had me so far and gone through some of these online videos, I've realized now we're at a stage where we're going to do an actual install. And I wanted to have some sort of overview of an installation to hit the highlighted points as we're going to go and do the actual install. So just kind of like a primer of sorts to do this. And I wasn't sure how to go about doing it and I think this may actually be the best version to do this. I want to keep this a very quick, simple mechanism for giving you an overview to know what to expect when we do our solar thermal install in the class. So I found the Florida Solar Energy Center has a really nice website. You'll see this website linked and they gave us permission to use their materials. So what I want to do now for the next couple of presentations is have some very short to the point installation guidelines and tips. And I will say these guys here to Richard and Dave did a great job on the post by post and I want to just use their information that they have on this website to delve further into our solar thermal installation. So the very first issue is going to be the collector. Now this is going to be a roof mount and I want to show you a few things. I know these images are small and so forth but they illustrate the point. As we did our MREA's version of the solar site assessment form and we did all of that previous background and we looked at the roofing, we looked at the decking, we looked at the backyard or front yard where it might be the best suited for a solar collector. Take a look at this roof. Now this is in Florida so you can see that this roof has got a little wear and tear and these images show a nice roof. I don't notice any curling of the shingles so it's still a, a generally a decent shaped roof. It probably has another maybe 15 years of life left on it. And uh, let's take a look at what we're going to need to worry about when we do the actual collector mounting. Now these images obviously occurred in Florida. In the state of Illinois we have to deal with snow loads. So we would want to get inside of the roof, make sure the rafters that are in the roof are firm and everything that we're going to attach to the roof and the decking is going to be sound. And again, we took care of that and we looked at that and we inspected that during our solar site assessment. So we're going to do an install. We now know this was just a throwback to verifying that the roof in this particular location is going to be good. Then we verified that the location is going to have the most southerly route to collect that sun and it's time now to start locating the trusses. Now on our solar shed that we're going to do this on here on the campus we have a trick and the trick is that every couple of years we tear the roof off and reshingle it and we can start over. On a home we don't have that option. What I do in the class is we would take a very small drill and I would drill a hole through the roof, through the decking, and then have somebody on the inside push through, a, say, a coat hanger or a piece of wire. And that will give us a location of where to find the edge of the roof rafters. And we'll show you that in the lab as we do that. But that's not an option on this person's home because now we have installed a hole into their roof. So one nice feature is to get on the roof then use a stud finder and get a decent stud finder and find where that first rafter is. Then you can make two assumptions. One assumption is that you're going to be 24 inches on center or which is not a great assumption but the other one is you can assume that your stud finder is good and you can go that 18 inches to 24 inches and, and verify the second one. So if you don't want to trust those two judgments, make sure that you can see the rafters from the inside, go up into the attic and measure it and make sure that you know how many inches between centers that we've got. Once you know that, you do a stud finder, you find it, you go every 24 inches, and now that you've identified where those trusses are, it's time to make the mounting techniques. There are a wide variety of, of products out there. A, a common product is a plate, a flat plate that will slide underneath the shingle. So this is an asphalt shingle. You can get a trowel, something flat. So a lot of people like to use a, a pry bar and gently lift underneath of that shingle and lift it up. Slide that foot, that flat aluminum pan, underneath that shingle so you have a nice watertight platform where that mounting clip and a support assembly plate will be at. Now again, you're going to slide that under there. I'll have some cutout videos here and in class we're going to see how to lift that up and put that lip in, but that's one thing. Now in Florida, this guy's wearing shorts. In our colder months, that tar that's underneath of the system 
of the shingles rather will tend to freeze and become hard and at that point we're under a real problem because we don't want to rip that shingle so if we at all possible make the shingle installation in the warmer months where the tile the shingle is softer for us to go through once we get that in there we insert that now it's time to be very careful on how to drill through that now this picture here is a very good picture and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go a little bigger here but what we see is the decking the underlayment the tile shingle and then the aluminum bolt the aluminum pan plate and the L foot so this will be a typical L foot installation now what I love about videos and cutting them is notice that deck screw lag bolt is, is exactly center that almost rarely ever happens we really want to reach that and we want to know what that is but that's going to be a big issue the next thing and we're going to have to talk about this in lab is to determine what the penetration length has to be for the amount of up and down force is going to be exerted onto that solar collector that's on the roof and so we cannot count this shoulder for the depth we can only count the actual threaded portion of that screw to indicate how much hold that that screw will have on that L foot again we'll cover that in greater detail later but that is something that you must calculate in order for your install to be code compliant once that clip is installed correctly the next step then is to use some permethane which is a permanent based caulk that will make a nice watertight fitting to where that aluminum plate is and where your lag bolt is some folks that I know will like to drill a hole and then squirt just a bit of that permethane right at the inlet that lag bolt will go through and that lag bolt will pull some of that permethane down and kind of give you a nice sealed joint our mission when we do our solar thermal install is to make sure that every joint that we do has to absolutely be watertight no ifs ands or buts about it so that gets us through the first thing that we've got our lag bolts in we've got our L feet on and then we're gonna accept those clips up there again you can read this and I, I've got the link listed for where it's all at the clip is going to have to be done so you've got your clip here's a small riser to give you that correct angle and the other thing that you're gonna want to do is make sure that any sort of exposed points are going to be properly sealed so for example I like to use a little bit of that permethane around some of these bolt joints because if and when I need to take the system down I don't want those bolts to be totally rusted that's my personal preference so that is the very first step that we've got I will hit the stop button we'll go to step two next